the, the neurons or the AIs are basically, <coughs> their presence in the world is really as a like, holdover from the original world. They're the only thing which really hasn't been completely changed by the war. They're really a neutral third party, but as the war has gone on, it's basically affected their infrastructure. Uh, and they're basically brought in to basically defend, protect their own interests in, in the world. Um, they w obviously were created by, by humans, um, but they basically became, when they became sentient, they broke away, if you like, and they had their own interests to protect. And that really hasn't changed much. But um, over time, they sort of represent more of what humanity really was in the past. Um, and that's why cyberspace is this sort of naturalistic environment as opposed to uh, a very cold, sterile one where the main, well, where the human's reality really is and the Azir's reality is. Uh, it's really a sort of like a, uh, sort of like a fantasy land which reflects where humans came from. Yeah, that's uh, using, uh, why we use Norse mythology um, as a springboard. Basically, it, enc it encapsulated the themes which we wanted to bring in. Um, man versus machine has been done many times before. Um, we wanted to get people into our idea very easily. And using that as step one, man versus machine, uh, is a good way of doing that. However, most of our themes are basically how do, does humanity r uh, relate to technology? And more importantly, relate to the adversity that came out of that. So the man, man versus machine aspect is really just more of a setup to lead into the Norse mythology aspect, which is dealing more with the human condition uh, and how it meets up with, um, I keep mentioning adversity, uh, environment. Um, Norse mythology uh, is really more about uh, stoicism, the human uh, ability to survive and adapt and overcome. Uh, the Norse, as basically most people remember the Norse as just, just as Vikings. But Nordic culture is, is dealing with about lack of resources or uh, dealing with a very harsh environment. Um, the Viking ethic, if you like, came out of dealing with those problems. So we're basically reflecting, using that idea to reflect uh, humans' adversity in the face of technology into humans. The fact that an average, well, actually this ties r really closely in with uh, the idea of uh, men relating to technology. Um, man is a tool using creature. Uh, he wouldn't really be anywhere if he didn't have an opposable thumb and the ability to adapt things in his environment to his own advantage. Um, I think it would be uh, rather um, fruitless for humans to reject all technology um, and they would never really go anywhere with it. So the idea to overcome a, a machine menace, basically a product of complete technology, I think you need to learn things from it. Um, uh, in order to basically overcome come it, you, it will empower you, tools empower you, technology empowers us, but you have to be aware of not using too much. Um, the machines represent complete use of technology and machines. Um, the Azir's approach of combining technology, um, machinery, uh, cybernetics with humans uh, is sort of like a compromise. It's, it's a way of dealing with that problem. Uh, yeah, we use myth mythology to uh, basically d explain away a lot of uh, the technological issues, if you like. Um, uh, with uh, undead, um, in particular, basically the, the process of bringing inanimate flesh back to life. There's two main approaches. There's the one where the Azir uh, basically use um, dead orc troopers to as as uh, valiants, um, bring them back to life. Um, they will try to, uh, they're really trying to preserve the, the, the skills, the expertise, uh, the uh, experience of um, the, those troopers, uh, embody them, basically bring them back to life to, to relive, continue their lives. Where, mm -hmm. Whereas another aspect of that is the ones that Hell uses. Um, and she's essentially just using them as extra bodies. She's not really interested in preserving certain aspects of things. Uh, Hell's philosophy is very different in that she's just really interested in getting more bodies working for her. Um, it doesn't matter if it's missing limbs or anything like that, or if the personality is demolished, it really means very little to her. Um, they zero more about preserving the human, the soul, if you like. Um, so basically, uh, Resurrection is coming back in those two things, and that's basically what powers the Azir themselves. They're cybernetic through, you know, they've probably died many times, but they've been resurrected 
to keep on fighting this sort of eternal war at times.